My name is Ryan Turk. My idea is called Done With Dots. So hi, my name is Brian Dannon. I am the president and video producer for India Beaties. And uh, we're Team Pegasus. And our venture concept is a second wind reactive infrastructure power generator. My name is Christina, and I'm going to present the One Motion Syringe. Hi, my name is Justin Han, and today I'm going to talk to you about Wonder Foods and Wonderful. So my pitch is for the Young Social Entrepreneurship Project. All right, well, this is Agbert. Well, my name is James Molini, this is Charles Caputo, and we are uh, developing World Energy Solutions. Hello, my name is Eric Stribling, and I am here today to present to you an awesome combination of two ideas. Well, I'm going to introduce an invention that was inspired by my uncle, who's a beekeeper in Paraguay. I'm Sid, and I'm joined here by my colleague, Louise, Sinan, and Taylor. And we are team Numera. I want to show you all the ArcFab Innovation Foundation. Uh, our group did uh, side microfinance. Hey, how's it, how, how y'all doing? This is Kwanzaa Hall, Nana City Council. I'm really, really proud of the good work the students are doing here at the business plan competition at Georgia Tech. This is a phenomenal effort. Ten years in existence, Terry Blum and the whole team at the management school are doing a great job to bring students together, to get innovation happening, focusing on the experience of entrepreneurship early on in life. I think it means so much not only to Georgia Tech and to the students' lives, but really to the economy of Atlanta. If we could just grow two or three companies that grow as large as ISS out of this competition, each year, wow, think about how many jobs we would be creating and how many lives we, we would be impacting. And it's even more important that now we've got groups working on social innovation, trying to change and have a positive cultural impact on people that are not in the usual business arena, but they're still trying to build models that can be sustainable. This is great. I'm really excited. I want to do a lot to help. I'm even deciding to be on the boards of a couple of, our, of these companies. If they need me, I'll ask tough questions. T-Live has talked me into being on their board, and I'll do it for others. This is great, and I'm looking forward to seeing the winners and figuring out how we can fund them. My name is Christina, and I'm going to present the One Motion Syringe. In third world countries like the Philippines, majority of the poor live in rural isolated areas which are very difficult to get to. In these um, isolated areas, there's a significantly large ratio in between healthcare workers and the rural population. So they rely on training volunteers to administer vaccines. Right now, training is difficult and timely because of the interaction with the syringe. So first you have to insert the syringe, adjust, the gri adjust your grip, and push, this, push the vaccine inside all while making sure that your needle doesn't move. I was thinking that if there's a better way to do this, then more people can be trained in a less amount of time, and therefore um, the vaccines can reach more people in these rural populations. These are some um, mechanisms I explored looking for a way so that you don't have to adjust your grip. And after building some of these, I realized that the best solution is really the simplest solution, which brings us to the one motion syringe. This one motion syringe um, utilizes a simple squeezing mechanism. So all you do is insert and then squeeze without having to adjust your grip, which I feel would um, decrease the training time needed for the volunteers. This syringe utilizes pre-dosed pl plastic packaging, which eliminates dosage errors completely. Also, right now, vials are overfilled by 20% to um, account for the errors and dosages. So imagine the impact of being able to reach 20% more people with using the same vaccines that you have. Um, I envisioned a very clear packaging, and since a lot of these um, volunteers are illiterate, they only have average of two years of education, I wanted these things to be color-coded so that they could still um, use it without um, knowing how to read. This is how the um, parts go together. The picture on the bottom right-hand corner is shows the snap fit of all the parts, and once you snap fit it and you can't pull it back out, which eliminates the use of the which eliminates reuse of the syringe and the needle. The body on the top is, can be reused 100 times over until it breaks. So this um, eliminates a lot of waste. So let's talk about the, um, the, the, the savings of the company. So there's less cost to manufacture pre-filled syringes, and you, the vaccine companies um, benefit because of less overfill. Also. The magic lies in the body of this product. There's less tolerancing because you do not need to measure anything. It comes pre-filled. Also, this is, does not need to be sterilized. Therefore, because of these two things, this can be manufactured in any place, in any developing country, which has um, 
injection, plastic injection molding. So not only does this reduce the cost of transport from the um, factory to the healthcare center, but also it spurs local economic growth. In recent years, it's become apparent that we need more clean, sustainable, and ind independent energy solutions. In response to this, many countries have invested more in clean energy technologies. One popular approach is to use wind power. The current approach is to develop large wind farms consisting of multiple large wind turbines in serendipitous locations that take advantage of uh, natural winds and also have aesthetic viability. Our team believes that this isn't really the best approach. Large wind time turbines are expensive to install, they're difficult to maintain, and they require specialized technicians and equipment. Another approach is to use small wind generators. The small wind genera generator market has grown 78% in 2008 alone, according to the AWEA. In the past five years, the market has grown 30-fold, and since 2002, worldwide investment into wind energy has been steadily increasing. Our solution, the second wind reactive infrastructure power generator, seeks to embed small wind turbines inside the medians that divide lanes of traffic. The wind turbines, are, the wind turbines take advantage of the winds generated by passing vehicles and use these to create electricity. Our system is a modular system composed of two modules. First is the generator module. Inside these modules is an array of Savonius turbines that take wind from either direction to produce electricity. On the sides of each of the barriers are steel panels that are perforated to allow wind to pass through. Also, they're removable to allow maintenance to be formed more easily. The second module is the storage module. The storage module has an array of batteries inside that store excess, gener excess generated electricity and also regulate the voltages that are generated by the turbines. Combined, this, perform this provides a scalable architecture that can be customized per application. Each of the modules is removable so that maintenance can be performed off-site. If a unit breaks down, you simply remove the module, replace it with a new one, and you're provided with uninterrupted service. Most industrialized nations have large networks of roadways. Our goal is to embed each of these turbines into the roadway infrastructure. The US alone has 6 million kilometers of roadways. Russia has over 300,000 kilometers of roadways. And China, over 3.5 million. By embedding these, these modules into the highway infrastructure, we look to provide energy for roadway utilities such as streetlights, traffic signals, uh, toll booths, uh, cell towers, a yeah, bunch of different applications. With the recent emergence of the purely electric vehicle, a system for recharging them has yet to be established. Imagine if you had a network of these barriers lined up leading up to your refueling station and providing that electric refueling station with the electricity that it needs to sell. The final application would be to install these into airports. Runways are full of winds generated by taking off and landing planes. We believe that these generators can be used to generate the electricity needed to power runway utilities and intra-terminal transport. My name is Ryan Turk. My idea is called Done With Dots. Done With Dots is a medication dispenser for tuberculosis patients in developing countries that allows them to independently take medication while it tracks their adherence to their medication prescription. So one of the largest barriers to effectively treating infectious diseases in developing countries is not the availability of medicine, but rather the fact that patients don't take their medicine correctly. So for a disease like tuberculosis, you get patients that don't finish their medicine, they don't get better, they infect other people, and it gives rise to drug-resistant strains of tuberculosis, which are harder to treat. So to address this issue, the World Health Organization created a program called DOTS, which is called Directly Observed Therapy Short Course. And what that means is that patients have to travel to a clinic once a day, every day for a year and a half, so that a nurse can directly observe them taking their medication. And so in dense urban areas and in uh, large rural areas, it's proven to be relatively inefficient. And up to 30% of patients default out of the program because they find treatment so restrictive. And so what is needed is a way to introduce flexibility into the DOTS program 
while still tracking patients' adherence to their regime. And that's what the Done With Dots monitor does. Say that five times fast. Um, so what it does is it allows patients to take their medication independently for two weeks. It tracks the removal of each dose from the monitor so that you can still um, determine whether they've adhered to their, whether they have adhered to their prescription. And so what this accomplishes is it tries to retain those 30% of patients that would otherwise default out of the treatment because it's so restrictive. And furthermore, one of our sponsors on this project, Dr. Molding from UCLA, his research in Haiti has shown that if a patient successfully adheres to their regime for the first 11 weeks, they're more than 90% likely to continue that trend throughout the entire course of treatment. So for an overcrowded um, clinic which has uh, patient to clinician ratios as high as 500 to 1, it allows them to uh, discern the reliable patients that can independently take medication from those patients that uh, need more counseling or may need something as structured as DOS. So something like this represents uh, only about 5% of the current cost of um, the DOTS treatment program. It can be produced for $7, and the medication costs $25, and current DOT treatment costs uh, $250. So that's my project.